Hey guys, this is Phil. Um, this is going to be your final review session for Microsoft Excel. Uh, I'm going to be muting everybody uh, as a part of the meeting. And um, so just, you know, like normal, just type in your questions into the chat box. We already have one question, but I'm going to, I'm just going to wait for um, some more people to join uh, just because we, it's not even two yet and, you know, give some people some time to, to join the meeting. Um, but I will go ahead and answer that question once once we officially begin. Um, so just hang hang tight. If you have any burning questions, go ahead and type them into the chat box. That way, I have a record of them, and uh, I'll just walk I'll walk right through them once we officially start. Okay guys, welcome. Um, this is your final review session for Microsoft Excel. I'm just going to give everybody a few more minutes to go ahead and log into the meeting. Um, we already have um, a line of questions here, so go ahead, like normal, just type them into the chat box. Just remember that everybody's muted. Um, so that's where I'm going to be finding all, their, all your questions and, and be able to help you guys.
Okay, just a few more minutes, just waiting for a couple more people to join in, and then we'll go ahead and get started with the, with the line of questions that have been showing up. Um, again, this is your review session for Microsoft Excel. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the uh, final Excel review session. This is Phil, for those of you who don't know. Um, everybody is going to be muted, so if you have any questions, go ahead and type all the questions in the chat box, and I'll go ahead and answer them for you. Um, we do have a line of questions right now, so I'm going to go ahead and start with um, a question about G-metrics. And there was a question, how do you show a split-screen view um, on, on your work. So to do that we go into the view tab and it's your split function here in the window group and actually we'll and then it goes ahead and, and splits it into four parts if you wanted to just split it into two you, or if you wanted to split it from you know whatever uh, product manager, you just go ahead and split and it'll actually, right where you put the center bit, or the top left corner I should say, is where it'll split into the four panes for you. So that should be your split screen function. Um, if, if that's not what you're exactly referring to, there's also a way if you open um, two different files, you can get them into split screen view, which may be what you're talking about. So that's um, if you were going to go ahead and open another file, you would. Here, let me just do that for you. So now that you have this other page open, you can go, it's still in your view tab, you go ahead and click arrange all and if you arrange all in a vertical position you get your two work um, workbooks side by side for you. Um, so now you have both, both worksheets open at the same time. Another question is how do you add a space between text you're trying um, to combine with the concatenate function? So I showed you guys, um, hang on one second, I'm just going to bring this back. Um, how to add a comma in between two names. To add a space, all you do is just add a space in that, in that middle text function instead of a comma. So uh, just to show you. You know, we'll do we'll do kind of the same example. Um, I 
So then now you have the space. So that's all you do. Um, oh, I, won't, I won't show it like that then. So if you can see it in the formula bar up here, all you do is you add your quotation marks and just put a space in between. And now you have a space in between your two um, combined text cells. Uh, another question about G metrics. Um, it does give you questions in rotation. Um, you're, you're given three different pools of questions for the G metrics. So a lot of them are kind of kind of the same, but that just means that you know it's the more li it's the likelihood that it's going to be on the test. Um, so the more and more you're doing formula questions that seem redundant, the more and more you should be um, practicing that because that's just what the test is going to be on. Okay, another question is, can we use the autofill uh, function to copy upwards? Yes, you can. You can use it in any direction. Um, she was referring to one of the questions on the G metrics, I believe it was, where you had to copy a spark line up versus down um, a certain column. So yes, yes, you can. So if I wanted to, I'll just show you with this, not a spark line, but yeah, you can, you can go upwards. It, problem with what I just did is it's copying it from from over here so it's just going straight up the the um, the chart but yes you can you can autofill up down left right Okay, any questions guys, go ahead and type them into the chat box. Okay, so there still seems to be a little confusion on the spark line, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, just going to go ahead and show you guys. 
just to see if that helps clear anything up. Oh, I think I have the same problem here. See, can I insert it now? Yes, I can. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to do the sparkline uh, autofill. So we'll start at the bottom, and we'll do the same data range. I think this is what the question was. And then you just click the handle and use the autofill feature all the way up, and it just freaked out on me. So that doesn't change anything. It's it's just your um, it's just selecting your data, and then it it just moves up with, with it. Yeah, it just moves with the uh, with the cell reference. So hopefully that cleared any any sparklines questions up. Um, if not, go ahead. Keep keep typing it in. I'll see if I can help in a different way. Any more questions? Um, just to a brief reminder on what the final review session was on. Uh, the sections were applying formulas and functions. So that had to do with if, with the VLOOKUP, um, concatenate, uh, regular math functions that you had to use. Um, then there was the presenting data visually section, which was um, manipulating illustrations or different pictures. Um, at, we just kind of went over the spark lines, but that's in that section. Um, sharing workbook or worksheet data with other users was another section, and then analyzing and organizing data was the last section. So if any anybody has any questions in regards to those different categories, go ahead and type them in. Okay, so there was a question um, in regards to, first it was the if function, but um, it's mostly just if there's text in your formula, um, you, have to, you have to put the text in quotes in the formula. So like I did with the concatenate formula, I had a quotation 
mark space quotation mark. That's just the format Excel uses. Um, so the question was, are there different number formats that have to be used in, um, in quotation marks? And the example that um, was asked was, like, if you had to say this person's sales were less than 5,000, and if you had to put that into quotation marks, um, the answer to, if I'm, at least if I'm understanding that right, is no. Um, you should just be able to type it in just um, with the greater than or less than sign as a formula. So you would just like reference here. Let me see if I can get a better. So, oops, hang on. If you wanted to know if, if this row was, you know, highlight which ones were less than 5,000 or, or whatever, you were using the if function. Um, let's see if I can do this on the fly here for you. So if we have, hmm, it should work. And if it doesn't, you're just going to have to bear with me, and I'll, and I'll try to figure it out for you guys. But it should it should just be if um, this number, so you would click your cell, is less than 5,000. Then you would type your value if it's true, value if it's false, and you should be good. Another question is, will the certification exam be a combo of multiple choice and simulations? Uh, no, it will not. If, if you haven't gotten to the, well, okay, I'll just say the G-Metrics test prep is the best and most, um, or it holds the most likeness to your actual certification exam. The Skillsoft courses are the ones that have partial multiple choice and partial kind of simulations uh, questions it will all be simulation. There's not going to be any multiple choice. Basically how it's going to be set up for you is um, a, little, a little text box will pop up down here on, on the certification giving you directions like Gmetrics saying, you know, make a spark line for that data set or whatever. So you go ahead and you have to make, you know, go through all the steps in your Excel sheet to make that spark line and then you just click the next um, button and it'll just bring you to the next question. So there's no multiple choice, it's just strictly, um, it may be multiple part simulation, so it may first want you to, to make the spark line for the beginning of the data, um, like we kind of did here, so like we, if we only made the spark line for this and then the next part of the question would be, okay, now we use the autofill feature to finish it all the way throughout the entire chart. So there might be multiple parts to a simulation, but there's no multiple choice. It's, it's strictly a simulation um, certification test.
So there's a question um, asking if you're able to take the Geometrics test prep um, at the library. And to answer that question, I'm not completely sure. I know that if you have access at home, you should be using this Geometrics at home. Though if there is a special case, for some reason your computer breaks, you're not able to use it, you know, at your at your house, but or you get access from the library normally, and you don't you don't have a home computer to use this. Um, I'm sure that there will be accommodations for you. You would just have to go ahead and let us know, um, and then we would go ahead and contact the library, let them know your issue, so that they could set something up for you. Um, so that would be my answer. I don't think that there are any formal Geometrics test prep sessions at the library. You would, it's kind of, you're doing it on your own, at your own pace. Uh, question, is there a fixed amount of steps per questions on the Geometrics training test? There isn't a fixed amount of steps. You can, um, if it asks you to type in the sum, uh, well, I'm still in formula mode here. If it asks you to find the grand total down here, you can either physically type in sum and you know and do it this way and get that answer, and it would be correct, or you could um, type in the equal sign go up to your formulas tab, hit auto sum, then hit enter and get get the same answer and then um, go on to your next question. Both would be correct because it, basically what the test looks at is your end step or your end state. So it doesn't matter how you get there. You could even um, potentially mess up. So say you you didn't hit, you hit sum, but you actually meant um, average or something like that and you hit enter that's not the end of the world because you didn't hit to the next question you could even reset and come back and it'll just reset the question for you to start all over again but all you have to do is just before you hit that next to move on to the next question make sure that um, you answer the question to the best of your ability to what you think is right um, but it, you, you know you could be playing around in theory, you could be playing around and then at the very end do your sum function correctly, hit next, and you should be able to be getting it right. Uh, but obviously, you know, it's a time test, so you want to be going through um, pretty quickly, you know, as fast as you can, just because, again, it's timed, so, and, you know, test isn't going to wait for you. Okay, um, the, now the follow-up to that was that sometimes it wants you to hit the enter button versus, or it wants you to do it a specific way. The Skillsoft wants you to do it a specific way. The Geometrics test prep and the certification exam, all that matters is the end steps or the end state. So you can, again, you could just do it, you can make a sum however many ways you can formulate a sum in Excel, but as long as you get that same right answer, you would get the question correct. It doesn't matter if you hit the enter key, it doesn't matter if you use the auto sum uh, tool or you physically type sum in, as long as you get that um, end step.
Okay, any other questions, guys? These are all great questions. Um, just looking, looking for some more. I understand that, you know, this is the certification test itself is pretty stressful, but and a lot of a lot of it is unknown, especially when you're going from Skillsoft to Geometrics. Um, but yeah, just from from experience, use the Geometrics. That's going to be your best friend. Um, you know, if you get familiar with the Geometrics, then once you walk in on certification, it's just going to be like taking the Geometrics test prep again. It's it's almost that identical. Not questions, but just layout and format of the test itself. Um, so the more and more you can you get to that point and you can practice with the G metrics, the better off you'll be. Okay, um, so you're talking about properties with headers and footers, I believe. Um, if I'm if I'm gathering, um, if I'm gathering what the um, so to do that, you would insert header and footer. Go to the design tab. It'll it'll kick you there automatically, and uh, and go into the header and footer section here. Click on header, and it gives you all these different formats. I think this is what you're talking about um, because somebody said like author and, and creator date. So that that would be like this option down here. Author would be New York Wired three. It would give your page in the middle of the um, header. And then the date that this is the date of the header um, in the in the other one or in the uh, in the right header, and you can do that for footer too. It's the same options. So I think those are the different um, properties that you're talking about. They're also here. These are all your different um, properties. But I know on the test, um, I think they liked you to use these header and footer um, drop downs. Uh, just in case I didn't say it, that was a question um, asking about the document properties um, that would be shown on a header and footer. So again, you would just go into your insert tab, header and footer, 
and then you would click on the drop down to add to add your header and footer um, properties. So the question was on the di adding the different um, labels to the document. Uh, there's a question on, will you be assigned a specific date or time to take the test? Uh, I believe you guys are scheduling when you can take the test. The test is being offered either August 4th or August 5th, but it's up to you guys to schedule a time um, to go and take the test on that date. There's probably um, like different different areas for you to sign in, if that makes sense. So like you know, they may be running the exam at 10, then maybe at 2. So you have you have to physically, I, those are just arbitrary times. I'm not sure if that's, that's real or not. Um, but what you would have to do is go and say, I'm going to go sign up for that 10 o'clock test and go ahead and register yourself for that 10 o'clock test. Any other questions, guys? Final review, test is around the corner. Any burning questions? Um, in regards to the testing at the library, I would try to work out. Um, I would try to work everything out with the library before you went and and went ahead and emailed Christine. Though I'm sure she'd be happy to help you. Um, that way, she just doesn't get a whole and a whole bunch of emails um, asking the same question. Uh, I'm sure she will also be sending out emails as reminders. Um, as the test comes closer and closer, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, jump the gun and go ahead and, and email her. At this point, I would uh, try to work out any issues at the library itself. Any other questions? I'm just going to go ahead and, and go to um, maybe what the most frequently asked you know, um, questions, I guess, would be on the test or the most used functions that you, or most, the function that you're going to have to use the most on the test. Um, obviously, as you can tell, formulas and a pretty big one. Um, spark lines, you may have like a question or two. Um, formatting. A table as a graph, or as a as a yeah, no, as a table. Making a graph, um, positioning that graph somewhere else on the worksheet. I would do that. Conditional formatting, you'll have to do maybe three, four times. That's a pretty heavily used one. Um, any kind of backstage setting manipulation, so that was like when you went into your file tab, you went to Excel options and added different things to the quick access toolbar. 
um, checking for issues. That's that's something that you'll probably get asked on because that's about um, information security with the Excel workbook. Um, hyperlink use or creation, I should say, is another pretty um, pretty heavily used or ha frequently asked question. Um, so we have a question on the countif function. Um, you can you can go ahead and, and do the countif function. Um, basically, what that's just going to well, you probably know what it's going to do for you, but um, I wouldn't worry about that to the to um, to a major degree. That's probably more of a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Advanced uh, formula for what you're going to go ahead and get certified in. Um, the ones that I would really worry about are the basic ones like uh, some average. But basically, the count if function is just your if function and your count function at the same time. So it'll just it'll literally just count for you how many of these cells is over five thousand, um, and just give you give you a numerical answer of three or four based on how many. Um, actually fit that criteria for you. So I'll go ahead and try to do this for you on the fly, um, the count if function. So we're, I'm, all I'm doing is selecting my range that I want it to count. Um, you're going to hit the comma to, set, or to go to the next thing. My criteria is um, greater than, greater than 5,000. Um, actually, we may need quotation marks for this. So I don't remember who asked the question last time, but you do need the quotation marks for the COUNTIF function. So I'm sorry for saying that um, you wouldn't. And the only reason you need to have it here is because it's a separate criteria. In the IF function, you wouldn't need it. Um, but because it's, it's its own separate thing, it's a text, um, it's, or it's a criteria, so it's almost like um, a text function itself, so it would be like the same as typing true, false, or whatever. Um, you need those quotation marks. Uh, so sorry for that for that um, mistake that I just made. But yeah, you would you're going to need quotation marks for the countif function. Um, so if we go ahead and just make this less than five thousand, just to just to show you the difference. So now I know. In this data set, there are only three cells that are less than 5,000. So if that helps with the COUNTIF function. Any other questions? Name manager, some probably have to use on that. Um, any other questions? Um, I'll just go ahead and just in case you guys forgot, reread the categories of what was on this final review session. 
um, that was applying formulas and functions, which we've, we've kind of done pretty well. Um, your if function, vlookup, cell references. Um, presenting data visually was the next one. That was spark lines, um, changing an image or at inserting an image um, into the worksheet or workbook. Then another one was sharing worksheet data. So that's comments um, and saving, saving your file as a PDF to be shared. Um, comments you will probably have to deal with on the, on the test. Um, and then analyzing and organizing data. That's filtering through tables, sorting through tables, and uh, applying conditional formatting, which, as I said before, you will, you will have to do um, one, if not all, of those filtering, sorting, and conditional formatting of different data. So if anybody has any questions, um, go ahead and ask. or anything about the G-Metrics test. Um, okay, so we got a question on the VLOOKUP, which I will try to do for you again here. Um, we, should be, we should be a little more, if anybody was here for our last uh, little tutoring session, it was, we couldn't really get you, or couldn't really help you with the VLOOKUP uh, formula. We didn't have a good enough, but we weren't, we weren't prepared enough for that function, but um, let's see if I can do it here for you now. After, after a little practice. Um, <laughs> so we'll go ahead and try to do this VLOOKUP. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to look up the value you ask it to vertically in a table. That's what the V stands for. An H lookup would be a horizontal lookup. It's going to look at things um, in rows versus VLOOKUP does columns. VLOOKUP is used a lot more often than H lookup, and that's just because people Use the you know use different columns for different sections versus different rows for different sections uh, more often. So VLOOKUP is used more frequently. So let's say I want to look up um, this ID number. And now again with VLOOKUP, I'm doing it in the same worksheet, but it's really where it's most useful is if you're doing it in a separate worksheet. Um, but just so you guys can see everything being selected and manipulated, I'll just show you on the same, on the same worksheet. So I want to look up this ID number and then the table. So when you're, when you're looking at this table, which can be a little confusing, you have to just select what you want um, the VLOOKUP to, to sift through. So even though this whole thing is a table, I don't really care about any of this stuff. I'm, I'm going to want it to return my interpersonal score or this ID number. So you're going to start with the ID column, D column, and go all the way down to your interpersonal, or all the way to your interpersonal scroll, all the way down to where it ends. And now that's your table array, D4 to G33, not A4 to G33. And now, just because you've selected this thing outlined in green, your column number is going to change. So in this whole big table, ID is column 4, but VLOOKUP doesn't care about that. The, to VLOOKUP, um, the thing that's highlighted in green, this big box, that's your table. So I want it to return my interpersonal score. So that's, you know, by coincidence, that's column 4. But if I wanted it to do reliability, that's column three, not um, however many this is, like six or seven. So we'll go ahead and have it return column four. And then you have to, as it's explained here, type in either false or true. 
True will give you the approximate match, so it'll say, it'll return anything that's kind of close to that ID number or whatever your lookup value is. Um, a false will give you an exact match of what of what you want to look up. So we're going to go click false, and hopefully, fingers crossed, this should work for us, and it does. And now we have um, the interpersonal of two, the interpersonal score of two returned to us. So again, this would be really helpful if you were on a different sheet and you had to just only copy the information or the, um, you only needed to know Jacob Bernard's interpersonal score or whatever, whoever the person was, Michael Bluth's um, interpersonal score. So on a separate sheet, you know, label it interpersonal up here. And now you've got your formula underneath. So now, now everything's labeled for you. So that, that would be the process of using your VLOOKUP. So there's a question, um, how much time is, are you going to have for your actual exam? and how many questions will there be? I believe, if memory serves me correctly, you have 50 minutes to complete 25 or 30 questions. I'm, I'm leaning more towards 30, but um, it's, either, it's either 25 or 30 questions in 50 minutes is what your actual certification test will be. Okay, any final questions, guys? All of them have been good questions. Um, all of it you will probably have to use on these tests, so glad you're asking them. Um, and, and I'm glad you're asking more about the test. It shows that you guys are actually, you know, you care about what, you're not going to just go in blind. So that's always good. Um, but any other questions, Gmetric, certification exam, um, any actual content within Excel itself, don't be afraid just to go ahead and type it in the chat box. Any other questions? Um, again, conditional formatting is probably something you guys are going to have to use, though it is pretty self-explanatory. I understand why. Um, oh, hang on. Somebody's asking about my VLOOKUP formula. Um, So the question is, if I was doing this in a separate sheet, um, would the sheet name appear before or after the, the selected um, table array? Because um, what you're going to probably do if this was in a separate sheet, maybe it's better if I show you. Uh, fingers crossed. Let's see if this works here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. What you would probably have is, is a beginner um, a, uh, piece of data for you. 
So in this example, this would be the ID number. So you were given this ID number by whoever, and now you need to look up that person or that ID number's interpersonal uh, score. So the question was referring to, like, if you were back here, where would the sheet name go in this formula? And it would, go, it would actually go before, not after this selection. So I'm going to try to show you what a, um, a VLOOKUP formula would look like in a separate sheet, just so that if this isn't clear to anybody, um, you, you have that visual for you. So I'll just go ahead and type this in for a second to me. One minute. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to reference the cell in here because this is the value you want to look up. And now you're going to go to your separate sheet and now select the table array that you want to look up. So as you can see, it's got, oh, it undid it. There we go. It has question one, because that's the other worksheet, in single quotes and an exclamation point before the data set is actually, um, is even in the formula. So then column index would still be the same. It would still be four. And then range up, look up, we'd still want it to be false. And then close your parentheses. There you go. And now you have your interpersonal score on a different worksheet. So there's just an example of your VLOOKUP. Um, it is important with these single quotes. It's kind of confusing. That's why um, if you can, if, you're, if you can help it, it's almost just easier just to um, type it in automatically with like the, the formula finder thingy here because um, it'll, it'll tell you exactly what you need. Or if you had defined that table as something, then you can just type in that table here and, it, and it'll tell you everything um, exactly what you need. Uh, easier than if you had just like hit equals, clicked on VLOOKUP and had to do it all by yourself. At least this gives you some kind of explanation um, for your VLOOKUP. There's a question, will there be mortgage calculations? I don't think so. Um, Again, what you'll probably have to do, and I'm, and I'm being serious when I say this, is probably add one plus one. And I know that sounds kind of like dumbed down and like, you know, you're using Excel, right? You should be typing in a bunch of these crazy, complicated, sophisticated formulas. But basically what the test is going to do is just testing to see if you know, with this version of Excel um, certification, not the expert, but the, the basic certification. It's basically just asking you or, or wanting to know if you know where all these different functions are. So, you know, it'll be like adding, it'll give you the data and it'll just ask you to add the cells um, that, it, that it dictated to you in the question or subtract them or average them or whatever. It's not, you're not going to have to do anything as sophisticated as mortgage calculations. Any more questions?
Any other questions? Anything regarding G-Metrics, certification exam, Excel, uh, Excel content, anything? Um, we've had a lot of questions, a lot of good questions. Um, but if there's anything else, anything that you're just remembering now, go ahead, feel free. Just type it in the chat box. Okay, guys. Um, if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and we'll just end the final review session. Um, last, last minute here. Any last minute questions before I go ahead and end this? Okay, seeing none, um, we wish you guys the best of luck on your, you know, on your coming exam. Um, if you're not finished, go ahead and finish all your courses. Um, go ahead and get, you know, the geometrics. Prepare yourself. Um, again, that's the best way to study for this test is that geometrics test prep. It is the most similar to the actual uh, certification test itself. So really um, practice that as much as you can before your actual test date and time. Um, that would be my advice to you. Uh, but other than that, we wish you guys the best of luck, and we look forward to your success. See you guys later.